Hey guys, my name is Lily and today I want to show you how you can calculate the breaker size and fuel size for your solar system. And this here is my 12 volt solar system that I've built into the side of my pool shed. And um, it's really important that every device that you have, whether it's an inverter or uh, the solar charge controller or the solar panels, they all need a breaker or a fuse. And this is really important. Even the batteries down here need a fuse. So the fuses and the breakers make the system safe so that you don't electrocute yourself and also so that um, the devices are protected. And also it's important that the cables are protected because you don't want the cables to burn down. All right, so first of all, um, you can see I've done a few modifications to my system here. Uh, I've added this box here and I've also added an XT90 socket. And I've changed this um, top here. I've added a little bit of a wire mesh for better airflow. And then down here I've added a wire mesh and some vents at this side. So I try to get the system enclosed so that no mice can come in here. And next with this OSB, um, I want to build myself a door so that no children can access this solar system. Okay, so now let's start with the breaker that is connected to the solar panels, which is this one here in the box. So this is a DC breaker and it has 16 amps and on top here you can see the cables that are coming in from the solar panels and then here you can see the breaker and then this is where the cables are coming out. Now this breaker here is very popular also uh, because it's fulfilling the mandatory laws in many US states. So in some states um, it's mandatory that both the positive and the negative cable are separated if you pull down the lever here. So some people they just use a switch for the red cable but as I said in some states this is not legal uh, because the law wants you to separate both negative and positive. And yeah these breakers are really cheap actually so they are also quite reliable and they are really great breakers. Here you can see another one of uh, these DC breakers and I think they are awesome, they are great, but there's one thing that you have to consider. So these breakers, they have an upside and a downside and um, usually you have to attach the solar panel from this side and the other side leads down to the solar charge controller. And if you reverse that, then the breaker will catch fire. So you really have to make sure that you um, install it in the right direction. And there are videos on YouTube of professional YouTubers and electricians who can show you the right way on how to install your DC breaker. So this is really important to remember. But now uh, let's talk about the size. So this here is a 16 amp breaker. Uh, you can see the figure here. So it says 16 amps right here. So how do you calculate um, the size of your breaker? First of all, you have to look at the stats of your solar panel. In this case, I have a 375 watt solar panel. And here it says that the highest current that can come from the solar panel, which is the short circuit current, is 11.6 amps. So now we take this figure 11.6 and usually breakers are sized 20% larger than the highest current. So times 1.2. So we add 20%. So then we get a breaker with about 14 amps. Uh, the next bigger size that I had at home was 16 amp. So that's totally fine for my solar panel. All right, so now we have calculated the size of this breaker here, but you also need to watch out that um, the cables are thick enough to transport, to be able to transport enough of amps. 
So here we have a six square millimeter cable and now you want to check another table which is this one here. This is an Austrian chart about breakers and what breakers you can use on what size of uh, cable. So for the six square millimeter cable we can use up to a 40 amps breaker. So we are fine because we only used a 16 amp breaker. All right, so the next breaker that I've used on the system is this one here. This is a circuit protector, which is protecting the solar charge controller. On the red wire, we have connected the breaker. And this is a 40 amp breaker. Now, why have I taken a 40 amp breaker? Well, here the terminals, they are delivering 30 amps maximum. Okay, so now we have another calculation to do. So we take the 30 amps and then we add 20% and then we get 36 amps. Uh, I did not find a breaker with 36 amps so the next size is 40 amps. So this is a 40 amps uh, breaker. Now the big downside of these breakers, there are many variations of these breakers by the way, is that I've seen videos of YouTubers, they tested out those breakers and they work, but sometimes they don't work as accurately. So you might um, buy a breaker that says 40 amps, but in fact it's breaking earlier, maybe at 30 amps or something. So these breakers are not the most reliable ones when it comes to the exact amperage. So far I did not have a problem with this one. Uh, and you will find out once you have a high current if the breaker size is the correct one or not. So yeah, I've bought this breaker because I've seen it on the channel of Will Prowse and in his earlier videos he was using those breakers as well. So this is why I've bought a couple of them. And so far I cannot uh, say anything because so far I didn't get over 40 amps. Now these breakers are still awesome because you can reset them. So if it's breaking like this, then you can reset the breaker and uh, you can continue uh, using the station. So if you're worried about these circuit protectors, uh, then instead what you can always use is a fuse like this one here. This is a fuse which when it blows, it destroys itself. And this is how it protects the system. The downside is though that you cannot reset it like here, uh, but you have to use a new fuse. And this is why you always want to have some fuses uh, extra that you can use after there's a problem with the fuse. And fuses are really great because they are quite cheap and also they are really accurate. So a fuse uh, with 100 amps is what I've used for this inverter. So this fuse is protecting the inverter. Now why have I used 100 amps? Well, we have to do another calculation. So first we have to learn that the inverter has two sides. So this is the AC side, uh, but that's not important right now. Right now we just look at the DC side and the DC side has 12 volts and the inverter power is 1000 watts. So we take the 1000 watts of continuous power divided by 12 volts is 83 amps. So if the inverter draws 1000 watts, we will have 83 amps running over this red and the black cable, 83 amps. That's a lot, that's really a lot of amps. And now we know that we have to size the fuse 20% bigger, so times 1.2 is exactly 100 amps. All right, so here I have a 25 square millimeter cable. So now we have to check this chart again. At 25 square millimeter, I can use a 100 amps fuse, so we are fine. And also here, uh, this cable here is really thick where I have attached the circuit protector for the solar charge controller. So 16 square millimeters can handle a breaker with 80 amps. 
So here we are absolutely in a safe zone. Then we go down to the battery. Now the battery also has a fuse. And here I have used the next biggest size uh, to 100 amps, which is 125 amps. And this is a bolt on fuse, which I bolted on the battery cable. And the other side I have attached directly to the terminal. Uh, so we don't have a cable in between. And I attached a slightly bigger one here than the 100 amps fuse that I used here, because I want this fuse to go off and blow first. And then if there's a short somewhere here, I want this fuse um, to blow. So if for some kind of reason there's a short, let's say from here to here, then this fuse is going to blow. Now I still have to protect the terminals here with some insulation tape so that nobody can accidentally make a short here in between. Uh, but yeah, if some kind, for some kind of reason something happens, let's say this cable gets shorted to this terminal, then this fuse should blow. And let's say if this is malfunctioning, then this fuse will blow. And yeah, with these HM batteries, you always need a fuse, a bolt-on fuse or some kind of other fuse. Uh, because these batteries are not protected by a BMS, a battery management system. All right, so then for the inverter, we also have some breakers. And those breakers, they are standard size breakers, which normally are also used in houses, uh, because this is AC current, 230 volts here in Europe. So here we have a 25 amps RCD, which is more than enough for the system. And then we also have some breakers for uh, protection of the sockets with, uh, they are called B16. I'm not sure of the breaker size, but this is the normal breaker that we also have in the house um, here in Austria. So these are just standard breakers. And those breakers, they are protecting the sockets. So if you short yourself that you don't die. So the first breaker here, the RCD is protecting your life and the other two breakers are protecting the cables from burning down. Uh, then also we have a small fuse in here and this fuse is protecting the USB sockets. I just have opened up the fuse holder and we have a 10 amps fuse in here. And a 10 amp fuse times 12 volts is about 120 watts, uh, which is more than enough for those sockets here. But usually if you have a 12 volt socket, one socket is rated 120 watts. So if you have two of those sockets, you would need a fuse with about 20 amps. Uh, it really depends on what your load is. But in this case, I only have USB, so it's really fine for um, if I'm attaching for phones or for other devices. So it's really not a big deal if you size your fuses too small. What happens if you size your fuses too small? They will either uh, blow or the breaker will go off and then you know, okay, I have to use a bigger fuse or a bigger breaker. Um, the problem occurs if you have sized your fuses and breakers too big because then you have a hazard problem uh, because then what happens is that the cables might start to burn. So make sure that you size the cables adequately to the loads and make sure that you size the fuses and breaker also adequately to the loads and to the cables. Yeah and after you have chosen the right fuses and breakers then you can safely use your system. So now let's do another test of my system. I just switched on the battery switch. Now these two monitors come on. So now let's switch on the inverter. And now I'm charging my batteries for my drill here. And now we are using 7.6 amps to charge this battery. But also now I haven't connected the system 
to the solar panels. So now let's quickly do that. All right, so now I've attached this cable here to the solar panel. And now we are actually charging with 8.7 amps, but about seven amps are used for charging this battery. So we have a net amp charge for the battery with 1.4 amps. So that's really awesome guys. So right now I'm charging this battery with solar and I'm having a surplus of solar. So 1.5 amps are going down to the batteries and keeping the batteries full. And today it's actually cloudy. So the solar system still works even though it's cloudy and it's no problem to recharge smaller devices like batteries. Uh, of course, it would be a problem if you would recharge, I don't know, a power station or maybe a refrigerator. Well, actually the refrigerator would be fine right now because 100 watts is more than my refrigerator uses. My fridge needs about 86 watts. So yeah, no problem. No problem, guys. Okay guys, so this is how you can calculate the breaker and fuel size for your solar system and as you can see, it's not really that difficult. So yeah, this is it guys. Thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.